All right. Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar episode number 13, where we are joined by Roby Lawrence, and we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of co-working. So I am one of your hosts, Kyle Van Dusen. I own and operate Ogle Web Design in Granbury, Texas. And with me, as always, is Matthew Siebert. What's up, Matt? Oh, not much. It's uh, This is a later episode, so I yeah. think we're all a little bit punchy. I know I am, so um, we'll see how this goes. Yes, we're this is near my minutes. bedtime. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 4.30 in the afternoon is usually uh, dinner and then quick to bed because I'm an old man. That's how we all. Yes, we are all old men. Hello, Roby. How are you doing this morning? You're you're in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Bright and early. 9.30 in the morning. So early. That Um, is early. No, I was just watching a kangaroo fight uh, out the window this morning. Yes. Uh, So I'm all ready to go. (laughs) I'm glad you got to witness that. Is that pretty, pretty normal, pretty regular occurrence? Yeah. Yeah. 17 past eight o'clock every morning. Um, yeah, you have them named, I'm sure. Roger and Bessie. Yeah, that's naturally, naturally, Roger and yeah. Bessie. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, as you can see, we're here at a little bit of a different time today. Um, for those of you not watching live, that won't matter to you, but for us, uh, we're doing this one later in the afternoon, uh, so we could accommodate Australian time. And with us today is Roby Lawrence, as I said, and he is in Australia. So, Roby, other than the two things I've just said about you, your name and Australia, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, yeah, so it's Roby, like Roby One Kenobi. Um, that's that's how you pronounce it. And um, basically, this is me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Does that... Does that kind of sum everything up? That's that makes me so happy. Oh, man. We do, uh, we do an audio-only podcast. Uh, for anyone that's listening, he was literally in a nutshell. Yes. He had that prepared, and neither of us knew about it, so I appreciate that. You're my new okay. favorite guest. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a good episode, everyone. Okay, so for the audio listeners, uh, <laughs> I I graduated high school. That's about as far as congratulations I the system. <laughs> up to year twelve, and then I left and started uh, started a job with a small IT company and um, doing networking, fixing printers, uh, configuring email clients, all that really invigorating stuff. And after about five years, I just I needed some some kind of creative outlet which kind of pointed me to websites because it was still kind of in the tech field but i could i could get my my design on a bit more i'm not a designer let me just say that um <laughs> but uh yeah there was something i could look back at at the end of the day and say yeah i just i've i've built this not like jane's jane's printing now that's really cool and <laughs> <laughs> and and John can send emails. That's <laughs> I feel so fulfilled. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Did you try turning the monitor on before you called me? Okay. Is that so it? many times. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how I kind of got into websites, um, and then moved. I moved up into the uh, into Queensland for a couple of years and met a whole lot of people there from the WordPress community and made a whole lot of friends and networking. Um, and that's where I actually started the whole co-working thing, but, um, we kind of did it a bit differently. We didn't, we didn't use a space or anything. We, um, there were four of us. So there was me and three other, three other friends or co-workers and we'd just go around to each other's house, um, once a week. So, It was, I think it was Wednesdays or Thursdays or something, but we'd say one week, everyone would come to my place. I'd put on lunch for everyone. We'd all sit around the dining room table, connect to the Wi-Fi, and just work on our own stuff. But we were all there together in the one spot. So that's, I mean, that's that's technically co-working. Um, One thing I was going to say at the start is, if you, if the first thing that comes to your mind when you think co-working is the space or like you know, your local WeWork or whatever, that's that's not necessarily what co-working is. Co-working is, uh, here's my little definition that I found, individuals working independently or collaboratively 
together. That's basically all co-working is. Um, and so, yeah, you can come up with spaces around that or, or however you want to work it. It's really just up to you. Well, that's kind of what, uh, I mean, together, but separately, that's, that's definitely Kyle and I, I mean, we're, we're not in the same space, but we do talk to each other every day, uh, yep. about work. We just yeah. try yep. to keep it at work. But uh, yeah, no, that's that's interesting because when I think of of co-working, I think co-working spaces. I think of exposed brick first of all. <clears throat> there must be exposed brick. <laughs> or those those like yeah. big uh, big silver pipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the air conditioning yeah. vents and stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's a requirement. Um, but no, I mean, like I've I've thought about it, but I've always thought that uh, the overhead was something that I didn't I didn't particularly want or care for. Um, Roby, what do you think about that? about the the overhead as in cost yes yeah so there's there's lots of i guess lots of tiers every different place has different prices but there's also different kind of structures like some some people prefer to have a permanent desk at a co-working space where you can lock the door set up your own screens and computers and ornaments on the desk etc um that can probably be where a lot of the cost comes in, but then a lot of places also have hot desks. So like just a big long bench table in the middle of the room or something, you just turn up with your laptop, connect with your Wi-Fi, and that's it. And so a lot of a lot of places have options like that where it's it's a lot easier to kind of get in the door, mm -hmm. um, both literally and figuratively. Um, so like my local place, for example, is $33 a day, which is Australian dollars. So that's probably like $2 US. Nice. Okay. Uh, uh, on judging by the current exchange rate, I think that's about accurate. Um, so yeah, um, there's also the situation like me where I'm actually volunteering at my local co-working space. So I get use of the space for free which is really nice. It just means I just turn up at the beginning of the day, unlock, set up all the chairs, put the outdoor furniture outside and then lock up the end of the day. That seems um, like pretty so good I can still get all my work done during the day. Um, so that, that can help to reduce the cost as well. Um, yeah. And the, I guess the other thing with cost is just weighing it up with the benefits that you get out of it. Yeah. So I was going to ask what kind of drew you to wanting a co-working space? I know like a lot of website designers, website developers are kind of loners, you know, we kind of do this or drawn to this because we don't mind sitting in a dark room, staring at a computer by ourselves all day. Uh, that's not everybody. And there's times when I do want to do that. And then there's times when I want to be social. So what, what kind of drew you to uh, checking out co-working in the first place? Um, I, I thought I was really, I thought I was going to be one of those guys that sat behind the computer all the time and, you know, never speak to clients and be a bit of a hermit kind of, it kind of comes with the territory, I guess, in this industry a bit. But after a while I was just getting really, really bored at listening to the echo of my own voice on my walls and just needed someone else to talk to. And it was, it was really just a, a social thing, I think for me more than anything. Um, which is why we started with just friends. Like we didn't, we didn't start with a space. It was just friends coming together. Um, and then I think over time I realized a few of the other pros for me, like if you're, if you're around a group of other people who are getting their stuff done, it's very motivating for you to just sit there and get your stuff done. Like it's, it's a form of accountability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if, even if you're not looking at each other's screen, you're like, you can look, look up from your laptop lid and just look around at people and everyone's like getting like looking intensely at their screen with laser eyes, basically um, just, just getting, getting stuff done. 
Yeah. And I've noticed too, like being around, especially, I, I don't know about, you know, all the people, I'm sure there's people that do all kinds of different work in those spaces, but being around people that are kind of in a, in at least a somewhat similar field, uh, it, it levels up your game too, or you learn new skills and new things. So do you spend uh, much, how much time do you spend interacting with other people um, and, you know, talking shop with people when you're, when you're at your co-working space? So when we started with friends, it was quite often like we'd get onto a, cause we're all web, web people all work okay. with WordPress. we were essentially had the same client base, but we weren't, we didn't consider ourselves competitors. Um, so a lot of what we did was very similar to each other. We we're just at kind of different levels. Like one of us might've been really good at, um, at the senior development stuff. Another one might've been better at marketing, for example. So like we would, we might get an email from a client and then we just kind of say, oh, how, how would you deal with this? It's something I've never had come up before. And then everyone kind of pitches in and then you go, oh yeah, that's a really good idea. Or it might be like how, how one person uses a particular plugin or something. Sure. And then you start sharing on the spot. And so that happened probably more in the very beginning. And so it was probably a little bit less productive to start with, but it was really beneficial as far as education. But then over time, we kind of started to realize, oh, we should probably, you know, respect everyone else's time a bit more. And then there was, after a few months, there were some days where we'd, we wouldn't even talk to each other except when we stopped for lunch. Mm -hmm. And then it, it started to get really productive. And it was similar when I started at an actual co-working space as well. It's like, you know, the, the first couple of weeks, you might still be getting over the novelty of, you know, being out of the office. Oh, there's looking around the room, looking at all the different things on the walls. And, but, but after that first little bit, it's just like you turn up, get into a routine, open your laptop, get to work. You don't get distracted as easily. I mean, sure. People around you are on the, are on the phone or whatever, but it's just, you, you just kind of zone out or I do anyway. So is your, is your space that you use now, is that somewhere you meet clients at, or do you have clients come meet you there? Yeah. So it's really good for that. That's one of the, um, one of the big pros I think of a co-working space is you don't want clients coming to your home really. Well, I don't. I don't either. Um, and they ask <laughs> all the time, like, can I just stop by your place? I'm like, nope. yeah. Yeah. And it's <clears throat> as much as when we get into web development, we like the idea of, oh yeah, I'll just go down and meet clients at cafes and stuff. It's never really that great. It's, no. I mean, it's always noisy, small tables, crap internet. So having a, a dedicated space where people can come into, you can give them like a proper street address and say, come and meet me here and and you if you if you're a permanent there if you're there a lot you can even use that as your physical work address like mm -hmm. on my google places listing for example i use my co-working space as my business address um and some some co-working spaces might even let you get your mail delivered there um rather than having them delivered to your house or or whatever right I know uh, Leanne just joined us. She said Facebook is mean because it didn't tell her that we started. She uh, she's been on the show before, and she actually uh, did did the show from her co working space, and it's something she uses. She walks to uh, when she goes to it, um, and she uh, I guess it sounds like you know she has like a dedicated desk, but there's also some like private rooms that you can uh, schedule time for. So is that a pretty common thing you've seen? Yeah. So we have. Um we use an online booking system for our co-working space. So we don't, there's no cash handling or anything involved. It's like you turn up, log on to the booking platform, book your, book your hot desk, or if you need a meeting room, book your meeting room for however long you want with different rates for half a day or a day or a week at a time. Um, and if the, if the meeting room is available, feel free to book it. It's, it's just, it's not a, the meeting rooms we have are kind of small. There's like a six person meeting room and then a maybe two or three person meeting room, but just a, a private room with a closable door and a, a big table in the middle, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So I know, I know when we kind of posted about this in the group, we had uh, some people that were like, Hey, we got to tune into this. You know, I've thought about doing this. Or, and then we had some people on the polar opposite end where like, why would I go do that when I could just work from home all the time? So I do find myself, and I think it's, it's probably just personal preference. You know, I do find myself, the reason I love like this job set up is, you know, I'm pretty much in like a hoodie and gym shorts all day. Uh, I can get out of my bed and immediately start working if I want to, or I can just stop and go watch some TV for a little while and then come yep. back later. Uh, so yep. I think it depends on part of this is like your personality. Like you see some people that are just not like self-motivated um, all the time. And it's hard to work from home in those situations. You know, if you can't uh, just get up and get going. And then there's also like part of this, like having the routine of getting up and going to a job. And I know Matt has kind of a, I'll call it a little strange thing he does every day, uh, you know, since he works from home. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about that, Matt? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I wake up um, and one of the first things I do after getting ready for the, uh, for the day, I make my coffee and I hop in my car and I leave for work. Um, and that, that constitutes driving for about 20 minutes aimlessly in a, uh, a giant loop that eventually brings me back to my house and I get out of my, uh, my car and I go to work. And it's just that routine of getting out of the house, going somewhere, and like kind of clearing your head a little bit, getting out of that space, and, and then finding yourself back there, um, wherever that might be. Like That's, that's incredibly helpful, um, or at least it is for me. In that, if I got out of bed and I sat down on the computer, I would not be productive. I like the worst, that. The worst probably is though when you forget something at home and you have to drive the loop all the way back around, go get it, and then drive all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> but th that is definitely another big benefit for some people as well. It's like it's a huge mental thing, but having that separation between home mm -hmm. and work, um, not. Not for everyone. Someone might be like, you might be fine, Kyle, to get up at 7 a.m., roll out of bed and literally just sit on your chair and then you're good for the day. Yeah. But some people, yes, that, that separation is really helpful for me as well. Is Even if it's just a five-minute walk down the street or if it's a 20-minute drive or or whatever. And then I think the thing that goes along with that is actually getting dressed for work as well. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it... It, for me anyway, I found that a big thing from working from home is if I get up, just stay in my pajamas and then sit at the desk, I'm kind of still in that sleepy, groggy, lazy kind of mindset. Whereas if I, you know, get up, wash my face, put clothes on and sit down at the desk, like I've just arrived somewhere. I think that that's, that's kind of been really motivating for me as well. So that's, yeah, that separation is, can be underrated. So I'm someone who, um, when I'm working and I've only, so this is like my first like real creative job. Um, I've been doing it for, for 10 years, but you know, it, I just haven't before this, I was a, a licensed nursing assistant before that I worked in a kitchen, you know, and, 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 as far as those jobs go, like you have tasks, you have a list, you have things to do. Like it kind of keeps you, uh, it keeps you motivated out of necessity. Um, when it comes to design and more like, you know, critical thinking things and, you know, everything is up as a puzzle. I myself, I might be in the, uh, the minority here, but I can't have sounds. Like I sit at my desk and it's completely silent here. Uh, there's no music there's 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 nothing um and i've tried music in the past i've tried something and it just it distracts me and i don't get work done um i used to work very briefly while i was dating this girl uh who owned a print shop um i, I tried doing design there and just the two other staff members that were there i couldn't get anything done i couldn't focus like i i feel like i'm one of the people that needs solitary confinement to to have any sort of productivity um, man i i cannot do work without music going yeah no i, I have to have complete silence maybe i'm just a psychopath i don't know well I, those could I, be not related to and both be true i'm i think i sit right in the middle mm. so depending what i'm doing if i'm 
if I'm using my, the creative side of my brain, I like to have music, but the music can't have lyrics. Like okay. it, it just has to be like a soundtrack, like something theatrical or just music in the back, like just, yeah, basically music without lyrics. Actually, that makes um, a lot of sense. Um, sorry to cut you off, but lo-fi hip hop, I've actually started to sort of listen to while I'm working and that actually does work. Like that, yeah. that can work for me. So yeah, yeah. Right. for me, lyrics are the distracting thing. But then on the other side, if I'm trying to do like admin work or go through emails and stuff, then I sit in silence. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm going to record the next time I'm in here with my Google Home blaring music while I'm holding a baby, while I'm making websites, just to like show you a little window into my <laughs> actual world of how I work. I think you would both take it very much. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to do it. <laughs> Absolutely not. But, you know, at the same time, like, although I do work in silence and in solitary, um, it's said, it's been said many times before, but Kyle and I call each other, you know, how many times have we talked today? Like three or four times, like sporadically throughout the day. I'll look, but I bet that's about right. Yeah. And I think, you know, even though I do need the silence, like it does, there is a lot to say about uh, being able to pick up the phone or look over to somebody that you, you know, and, uh, and like you trust their opinion and all that. I think that like a co-working space, as long as they have other people like like-minded and similar enough that you can bounce ideas off of, man, that mm. would be a huge boon. Mm. Have you heard of the concept of rubber ducking? No, not in this context. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't actually have mine in this office, but um, I have a rubber duck that sits on my desk and if I'm struggling through whether it's code or trying to write an email or something, something that I'm just stuck with before I'll go and ask someone else or post the help in a group, you, the concept is you explain the problem line by line to this rubber duck. You might be like, okay, I've added the CSS for the color for the border, but this button still doesn't look right or whatever. And then just that act of going through the whole thing in your head again, line by line, a lot of the time the answer will just pop up. Hmm. Like you'll, you'll figure it out. And so just having, (laughs) there was a lot of times when we were co-working just at someone else's house, I'd be like, Oh, Paul. Yeah. You know, this thing where, you know, I've done this and then I've done that. And then I've set this up and then I'm like, Oh, and he'll just be looking at me and I'll figure it out. Yeah. And then he'll just go back to work without saying anything. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Man, it's so true though. Like just uh, just saying it out loud so many times, it solves that problem. I think it's funny, like a, a lot of the things you're talking about, like the benefits from the co-working space, um, you know, that's a lot of the like conversations me and Matt have back and forth. And for the record, there was five phone calls back and forth today, which it seems like a lot. We should probably do something about that. <laughs> no, um, I want more. Yeah, just keep the phone on the whole time. Right. Yeah. You know, we've yeah, actually yeah. done some of that in the in the group. We've uh, started a Zoom call and just had people jump on while we're working, and that's kind of interesting too. Especially you have people from all over the world, you know, kind of co-working together, which is pretty neat. Yeah. The the couple of times that I've done that, it's been a blast. You know, it's it's really really cool, and um, yeah, it's. It's the privacy of your own home, but the uh, like some of the benefits that you would get from uh, from a co-working space. Yeah. So just like I said before, you don't have to have a space at all. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a few guys um, down in Melbourne, in Australia, who who basically every day they're all work from. I think they're all work from home dads, but they they'll just turn on their computer, open up their Hangout Google Hangouts call mm-hmm. with the three of them and they'll just be on like a video the whole day just while they're working on their own stuff it's essentially co-working but at their own houses virtual co-working remote co-working (laughs) yeah so which can bring some of the pros from co-working without some of the cons of pro of co-working spaces um so that's yeah that's just an idea to think about so I did have somebody ask a question um, <clears throat> about like networking opportunities. So obviously you're in there, you, you have a business to business 
business. So you you work with other yep. businesses essentially. So everybody that's co-working in those spaces probably have some sort of business. So I imagine for somebody like you, there are some networking opportunities. Have you found work at your co-working spot? Yeah, I have actually. Um, and it's and just having that place to meet a client as well. Like the other day, I'm I'm usually only in my co-working space one to two days a week. That's kind of the sweet spot I've found at the moment because I do like to work from home as well. Um, but I was in there last week and then got an email from someone and said, oh, I've had this situation come up. I really need to, um, I'd really prefer to talk about it face to face. And usually I'm, I live 30 minutes away from town, but I was in there that day and I was able to say, yeah, just come down to the, the office. It was just down the street from where he was. And then he's, I was able to help him out and now he's a maintenance client. So just having that that place there um, to meet people um, in the, cause it's kind of a small town where I am. And then people come and go, get to know who you are and what you do. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of local referrals through the co-working space as well. So you said you, you go a couple times a week. I think that's what Leanne said too, is she goes a couple times a week. I'm just using you both as examples because you're people that I know that use co-working spaces. But uh, <laughs> did you? how did you kind of land on, on that kind of schedule? And do you keep like a certain schedule or is it just you wake up one day and feel like going? So my, um, fortunately, my neighbor and friend who lives across the street travels in to work four days a week. And his office is like, two doors up from the co-working space, hmm. which is really handy because we just have one car between me and Mel, my wife. So she's when she's working, she's often got the car and I just work from home. But if I ever needed to, I can just call up my friend and say, hey, can I get a lift into town today? So that that's really helpful. But then my routine comes from every Thursday. I'm I volunteer at the space. So that's my day. I'm there every Thursday. And then depending on travel arrangements or if I've got other meetings, then I'll I'll add in a second day somewhere during the week to just go in and and use the space again. So that's that's pretty much what I'm doing now. Um, when the co-working space first opened, I was I was really excited about it. So I was in there quite a lot, like four four days a week on average probably. Um and then after a while, I started to appreciate more the days that I was at home. So it's just kind of that trial and error where I was like, okay, too much at the space. Okay, too much at home. And then kind of settled in the middle at about one to two days a week. So yeah, that's that's where I am now. So that's, and I just use a, a hot desk. So if I had a permanent setup, it might be different. So uh, I imagine there's some characters that roll in and out of there. So do you have any uh, any crazy stories, anything weird happening at the co-working space you could think of? I should have probably like asked you this before, but it just <laughs> occurred to me. Um, not really. Um, I mean, everyone that's come in has pretty much been in a different industry. So there was one guy that was a, a manager of an IT company in another state and he just worked remotely from the space. There was a lady who uh, who was a travel agent. There's um, uh, another tech guy who works on database software. Another guy who works for on um, solar systems. So it's a big range of people. Um, but as far as weird, not really. No, like a uh, police busting in, arresting somebody for running a drug ring or nothing like that, huh? No, occasionally we we live kind of close to um, some commission housing, so occasionally we'll get some people who you know walking past with their bottle of Jim Beam at ten o'clock in the morning, but don't <laughs> haven't really had too many disturbances. Yeah, and that makes sense um, for me. I mean that that like you're paying the money to be there. You're a professional. Like the majority of people I, I would assume are, are like-minded. It's not like, uh, like sitting down at a Starbucks where it's free to sit down and, and work and pull out your laptop. Um, 
I think that you'd you'd probably find stranger characters at a coffee house than you would a co-working space yeah. which is exactly the benefit of the uh the co-working space like it's not a a weird loud you know awkward place to uh to have a, a client meeting or, or something similar mm. yeah yeah everyone's paying to be there right you want to find weird people come to texas and go to walmart there you go that's where they are okay thank you yeah I remember that no doubt <laughs> Next time I'm looking for weird people. <laughs> we got plenty of them. There's lots of them here. <laughs> uh, um, do you have any, I'm looking on here through comments and questions on here. Do you, you have any tips as far as if somebody's kind of on the fence about, you know, if this is something they want to look into doing or not, do you have any tips on telling people, you know, trying to figure out if this is the right, right kind of thing for them? Um, yeah. So, I, I also do want to say I'm not I'm not here to tell everyone to do co-working because it's good for everyone because it's not going to work for everyone, but to figure out if it is good for you, I'd say give it give it two weeks. Like don't just go for one day and then judge it off that because that's really not enough time. Like if I went my first day and decided off that, I'd say no, I was nowhere near as productive as when I was at home, so I'm just not going to try it again. Mm-hmm. But having that two weeks gives you time to kind of get over the novelty at the beginning, start to work with the distractions that are there if there's any distractions and get used to the space and kind of start to develop a bit of a routine. Um, So that's probably my biggest tip. Another tip would be to, um, especially if you're not sure where you're going to end up or if it's a space you haven't been to before, is to be prepared. So like... If you, if you need a mouse with your computer when you work, bring your own. Bring your own power board or extension leads because sometimes power can be difficult to find in places. Um, and even even your own internet, <laughs> which, which sounds a bit weird, but some places have pretty shocking internet to share with the 20 or so people that are there so sometimes you can be you can be all set up and then you go oh i can't even download my emails <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah a bit of a bit of redundancy um a bit of a backup plan is probably something good as well so do you primarily work off of a uh, like a laptop or i mean i can't imagine bringing an entire desktop set up you know multiple screens like etc like i work off of two screens and a and a, and a tower um yep. so for those people well how do, how do you uh how do you do that so i i have pretty much only ever worked off a laptop mm-hmm. so i'm kind of used to that um though saying that i have actually brought my desktop and screen to to the co-working space before okay um so it is done all right yeah, yeah, it has been done. I there was actually a guy that came in. Um, he was a graphic designer who came into the co-working space the other day, and he had a um, a twenty-seven inch iMac, and he had bought a four hundred dollar travel bag for this twenty-seven inch iMac that he brought into like... the co-working space. No, no, it was a pretty significant bag, <laughs> but I mean, once he was there, because the iMac is basically all in one, he just plonked it on the desk, plugged into the power, connected the Wi-Fi, and he was away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, found one of the uh, the issues that I had when I was working at the print shop, there was a couple of days uh, here and there throughout the week that I did, um, I would work on my own things, and as customers came in and they needed, like, you know, design quoting or something along those lines, like, I'd, I'd help out the staff. Um, but primarily, like, the day was spent doing my own thing. But I always found that, you know, I would have to offload files from my uh, my PC onto my um, onto my laptop. Some of my stuff was in a uh, like, you know, Dropbox or, or some sort of a cloud system. But, you know, the, the files that I like, the, the massive ones that I'm working on that are like illustrations or something like that, it's just not really feasible to uh, to work off of um, off of Dropbox. And mm. that that was an issue for me in that I would. Uh, I would lose progress sometimes like I would I would forget which one uh, like which version the desktop or the laptop version that I was actually yep. working on 
Um, so I think that like, you know, file management or at least like organization is, is pretty paramount when you're moving locations like that. Yeah. So the majority of the stuff I do is based in the cloud and it's mostly for that reason that I can grab, like I've got three laptops at home that I use this, my new one. And then my two old ones still actually work as long as they're constantly plugged into the power and a keyboard and a mouse and another screen. Sounds like my Mac. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're not really portable anymore, mm -hmm. but I still use them at home and I can easily switch between them. Uh, one, one's even Mac and one's PC, but because pretty much everything I use is based in the cloud. It's, it's very easy to switch between them. Um, so I can understand the difficulty with, with large files, like if you're a graphic designer or a video editor or something. Um, so I'm, I don't really have any tips there because I haven't really done it. Mm -hmm. Um, but our co-working space does actually have screens that you can use. Okay. Um, so they're, they're only HD. It's nothing insane, like a 4k screen or whatever, but there's, there's four screens in the space for anyone to just use whoever needs one. If there's a spare one, when you get there, just grab it, take it to whatever desk you're using, um, and then plug in and it, um, it rotates into portrait mode as well, which is really good for documents. Nice. Yeah. And websites. Yeah. There you go. Because websites are portrait. They are. Yeah. I actually saw somebody the other day with their monitor in portrait. And I'm like, man, that makes a ton of sense. That's actually yeah. a really good idea. Yeah. And I yeah. would have never done that. Well, awesome. Matt, you have any more questions for Roby? No, I think I covered my uh, my questions, comments, and concerns with co-working spaces. Awesome. Well, uh, Roby, I do appreciate you jumping on with us. I want to give you the opportunity. If you have anything you'd like to promote or talk about or send traffic to, let's do that. And also, let me ask you, uh, next time you go into your co-working space, I mean, it's probably awkward if there's a bunch of people in there, but if there's not people in there, or, or if you can, take a picture of it and post it in this uh, this comments in the live stream so everybody can kind of see the, the setup in there. I actually did a video walkthrough the other day. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, before I did promote anything, I just did want to, just in case anyone's thinking of opening a co-working space, mm -hmm. I've got a bit of a cheat sheet of buzzwords to maybe include in the, in the name. Um, so we've got hive, colony, swarm, flock, engine, bar, yard, shed, warehouse, firehouse, tech house, hacker, lab, hub, spoke, wheel, anything with the letter X, incubate <laughs> and growth i like it so the yeah just bar. feel free to use any of those for your new co-working space just run them all together i bet the domain's available <laughs> it, it probably would be yeah <laughs> awesome i'm glad you came prepared yeah always um as far as promotion we I, um, I do a podcast for WordPress people in Australia called WP Bosses. Um, so that's pretty cool. That is yes. cool. As far as promoting just, anything else. Just for uh, people in Australia or can we, can we listen? No, anyone, anyone can watch it, but the, okay. uh, the thing is we only interview people from Australia. Okay. So that's kind of our, it's not a big niche, but it's a bit of a niche. What sure. if I fly to Australia? Um, that we, we might be able to make that work. All right. Deal. What about neighbors like uh, New Zealand? Can people from New Zealand come on? Yes, actually we have okay. had some New Zealanders. Yes. Okay. They're, they're our, they're our family. One in the same, right? Hop, skip and a jump yeah. over there. Yeah. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. Just hop in the kangaroo's pouch and you're pretty much there. <laughs> Tell, tell us the website address where everybody can go check it out wpbosses.com.au nice 
Awesome. Well, I appreciate you jumping on with us. I will say uh, this week on the admin bar, uh, I've been sending out little emails at the end of the week. I mean, I've only done it twice, so I can't really say I've been doing it, but I have done it and I'm going to try to continue to do it. But kind of uh, some of the highlights of what's been happening in the group. I find that uh, the old Facebook algorithm gets you sometimes and not everybody's seeing all the good stuff. So look mm-hmm. for that in your inbox on uh, on Friday morning. So I'll have a little bit of roundup email of the things that have been going on. But what's going to be in there is a uh, lead magnet we gave away yesterday. So it's a completely unbranded lead magnet that you can use on your website as a lead magnet. So it's a bit of inception, but it's basically the lead magnet I've been using on my website uh, for over a year now, collecting leads. I, I checked my email list. I've I've collected a little over 200 in that uh, in that years period. So I'd say that's not too bad. But anyways, I I, uh, completely unbranded everything and you can get to it by going to theadminbar.com forward slash five F-I-V-E. I should have just probably put the numeral, but I didn't. So not the numeral. Spell the whole word out. If you go to the numeral, go back and then put in the whole word and then you'll get there. Uh, Other than that, I don't have anything else. Matt, do you have anything else to add? You already asked me and no. No, I'm I'm all I'm I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Do you, do you have anything to add though? No. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Roby, I appreciate you being here with us. It's been fun, man. I I enjoy talking to you every time. I'm not sure every time you speak if this is going to end in. Uh, I just don't know how it's going to end. So I like it. I like being on my toes like that. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Awesome. All right, guys. We will catch you on the next one. Bye.